So the PRINT study is an important study because it adds to the total body of evidence that supports the potential benefit of pegcitocopelin in patients with PNH. The PRINT study is a phase three study that was designed to evaluate the safety and efficacy of pegcitocopelin in patients with PNH who had not previously been treated with a complement inhibitor such as eculizumab or rabulizumab. This was a study that consisted of a four week screening period followed by a 26 week treatment period during which patients were randomized to either treatment with pegcitocopelin twice a week or standard of care, which did not include complement inhibitors. Prince actually had two co-primary endpoints. The first being hemoglobin stabilization, which was defined as avoidance of a greater than one gram per deciliter drop in hemoglobin in the absence of transfusions. The other co-primary endpoint was change from baseline in LDH. So Prince demonstrated that pegcetocoplin was superior to standard of care on both co-primary endpoints. So 85.7% of patients in the pegcetocoplin treated group versus 0% of patients in the standard of care group experienced hemoglobin stabilization. Now, as you would expect, if hemoglobin stabilizes, you would presume that that means hemolysis has been reduced and therefore you would expect to see LDH decrease as well. And that's exactly what happened. We did see that patients in the pegcitocopelin treated arm had a statistically significant reduction in LDH from baseline to week 26 compared to the standard of care arm. Now, in addition to those co-primary endpoints, we have reported on some secondary endpoints that are extremely important to further characterize the overall benefit of pegcitocoplin in treatment-naive patients in PNH. When we look at hemoglobin a little bit further, what we see is that the change from baseline, not only did it stabilize, but we actually saw an increase of 2.9 grams per deciliter in the pegcitocoplin-treated patients compared to 0.3 grams per deciliter in the standard of care. So this was a statistically significant difference in favor of pegcetocoplin as it relates to the change from baseline in hemoglobin. What that also translated to was almost half of the patients in the pegcetocoplin treated arm did reach normal levels of hemoglobin, which is pretty impressive given this particular patient population and given this disease state. This was compared to 0% of patients in the standard of care arm who were able to achieve hemoglobin normalization. On the other side, if you think about LDH, I mentioned that the co-primary endpoint of LDH did meet um, a significant difference in favor of pegcetocoplin. What this translated to from a normalization standpoint is that two thirds of patients in the pegcetocoplin treated group actually achieved normal levels of LDH during the course of the study compared to 0% of patients in the standard of care group. Now, um, overall, these results were extremely encouraging when we think about the benefit of pegcetocoplin. Interestingly, we did see these benefits start to begin within about two weeks of treatment initiation. So we saw improvements in hemoglobin and reductions in LDH by week two of treatment um, out of that 26-week randomized control period. Most of all of these patients in the trial have, um, have rolled over into a long-term extension study and they're continuing to receive treatment with pegcetocoplin. One thing to keep in mind is that in those patients with the standard of care arm, if they had the, if they experienced a greater than two gram per deciliter drop in hemoglobin during the trial, they could actually escape onto pegcetocoplin therapy. And many of those patients did and they, they continue on pegcetocoplin therapy to this day. So next steps for the overall development program in, for pegcetocoplin and PNH is we continue to understand um, what the long-term benefits are um, because Pegasus was a 16-week study with a 48-week period and PRINCE overall was a 26-week study. We know that patients with PNH are going to have the disease for their lifetime. So we continue to work to characterize the long-term safety and efficacy of pegcetocoplin and patients with PNH. We're also starting to look at additional subgroup analyses in different populations to better understand what pegcetocoplin could potentially mean um, to different populations of PNH patients who have various levels of hemoglobin to start with, et cetera.